The Wonders and Tragedies of Nikola Tesla the Great The story of Nikola Tesla is one of faith, hope, and belief. It is a story of what one individual can achieve and how a single person, utterly dedicated to his cause, can change the world for the better. In 1893, Tesla's AC transmission system had been proven superior over the existing DC transmission system. Westinghouse won the bid to supply electrical power for the world's Columbian Exposition. Due to an increase in his popularity following the success of the World Columbian Exposition, Tesla started becoming famous in the social circles of the power elite. In the era where patents are being filed to legally secure one's control and monopoly over businesses and earn maximum profits, Nikola Tesla did the exact opposite. He was neither concerned about the fame nor the profits that came with his work but was solely concerned with the advancement of science and its beneficial impact for mankind. Using Nikola Tesla's patents, Westinghouse Company won the bid to build a functioning power plant in Niagara Falls. This was a great opportunity for Tesla. At that time, Tesla was using his Tesla coil as a prototype to be used as a means of communication. Tesla dreamed of using electric impulses to transmit linguistic words from one corner of the planet to another without wires. By 1893, Tesla's theories on the possibilities of the transmission of words by radio waves were proven through his lectures and demonstrations. But as Tesla prepared to perfect this technology for the greater good of mankind, a tragedy struck. What caused Nikola Tesla's 1895 lab fire? In the early morning of March 13, 1895, the South Fifth Avenue building that housed Nikola Tesla's lab caught fire. Tesla was habituated to working late in his lab. Once immersed in his work, he would often forget about time and usually skip his food. One night he was busy working in his lab when an impulse made him leave the lab for dinner. As he dined, there came a knock on the door. A messenger had arrived with the news that there had been an explosion in the building housing Tesla's laboratory and everything had been destroyed. Tesla ran through the street where all his dreams, his visions, his work, his patents, his memories were housed but in vain. It started in the basement of the building and was so intense that the fourth floor lab burned and collapsed into the second floor. The fire not only set back Tesla's ongoing projects, it destroyed a collection of early notes and research material, models and demonstration pieces, including many that had been exhibited at the 1893 World's Columbian Exposition. When asked about what happened to his lab, Tesla told the New York Times, I'm in too much grief to talk. What can I say? After the fire, Tesla moved to 46 and 48 East Houston Street and rebuilt his lab on the 6th and 7th floors. Another man too at the time had a dream. A dream to control and monopolize all of the available assets. This man who had this dream held a major stake in all the Thomas Edison companies and was fuming at the loss that Tesla had caused them by winning the bid for the lighting of the World Columbian Exposition. Tesla winning the contract for the Niagara Falls power plant had further added insult to injury of this man. The man was now livid with rage. This man was John Pierre Pont Morgan, or J.P. Morgan himself. J.P. Morgan was an American financier, banker, and art collector who dominated corporate finance and industrial consolidation. At the height of Morgan's career, during the early 1900s, he and his partners had financial investments in many large corporations and had significant influence over the nation's high finance and Congress members. Morgan's total wealth was about 41.5 billion at the time. That is about 2.6 trillion as per day's standards. 
This was the power that J.P. Morgan had, and hence everyone feared him. Everyone but Nikola Tesla. J.P. Morgan wanted Tesla to sell his patents to him, and his businesses, so he could maximize his gains further. Tesla realized that consolidation of the patents in the hands of such a wealthy tycoon would mean that its benefits would never reach the common man, and hence Nikola Tesla refused. Morgan was not a man to let go of an insult. With his refusal to sell his patents, Tesla had really pissed off Morgan. Could it be that Tesla's refusal to grant his patents to Morgan resulted in the blaze? Was this the fallout of the war of currents that Edison had badly lost to Tesla? Or was it any other adversary of Tesla who did it? Or possibly even just an accident? No conclusive evidence was ever found, and maybe time will just keep its secrets. Tesla was totally distraught by the loss mentally as well as financially. The fire destroyed all his research papers, notes and patents. All of his books, journals, and also all of his apparatus left Tesla penniless. It might have been Tesla who would have been burned and buried in his own lab, but with good grace, Nikola Tesla was still alive. Then in 1894, Tesla began investigating what he referred to as radiant energy of invisible kinds after he had noticed damaged film in his laboratory in previous experiments. Colorado Springs To further study the conductive nature of low-pressure air, Tesla set up an experimental station at high altitude in Colorado Springs during 1899. There he could safely operate much larger coils than in the cramped confines of his New York lab, and an associate had made an arrangement for the El Paso Power Company to supply alternating current free of charge. Wardenclyffe Tesla made the rounds in New York, trying to find investors for what he thought would be a viable system of wireless transmission. In March 1901, he obtained $150,000. In today's dollars, that would be $4,412,000. He received these funds from J.P. Morgan in return for a 51% share of any generated wireless patents and so he began planning for the Wardenclyffe Tower facility to be built in Shoreham, New York. By July 2001, Tesla had expanded his plans to build a more powerful transmitter to leap ahead of Marconi's radial base system, which Tesla thought was a copy of his own system. He approached Morgan and asked for more money to build a larger system, but Morgan refused to supply any further funds. In December 1901, Marconi successfully transmitted the letter S from England to Newfoundland, defeating Tesla in the race to be the first to complete such a transmission. The tower had been erected to its full 187 feet. Then in June 1902, investors on Wall Street were putting their money into Marconi's system and some in the press began turning against Tesla's project, claiming it was a hoax. The project came to a halt in 1905, and in 1906, the financial problems and other events may have led to what Tesla's biographer, Mark J. Seifer, suspects was a nervous breakdown on Tesla's part. Eventually Tesla had lost the property in foreclosure in 1915, and in 1917, the tower was demolished by the new owner. Since 1900, Tesla had been living at the Waldorf, Astoria, New York, running up a large bill. In 1922, he moved to St. Regis Hotel and would follow a pattern, from then on moving to a new hotel every few years, leaving behind unpaid bills. Tesla would walk to the park every day to feed pigeons. He took to feeding them at the window of his hotel room and bringing the injured ones in to nurse them back to health. Tesla stated, I have been feeding pigeons, thousands of them for years, but there was one, a beautiful bird, pure white with light gray tips on its wings. That one was different. It was a female. I had only to wish and call her, and she would come flying to me. I love that pigeon, as a man loves a woman, and she loved me. As long as I had her, 
there was a purpose to my life. In 1934, Tesla moved to the Hotel New Yorker, and Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company began paying him $125 per month, as well as paying his rent expenses. The company would pay for the rest of Tesla's life. On the 7th of January, 1943, at the age of 86, Tesla died alone in room 3327 of the New Yorker Hotel. His body was later found by a maid after she had entered Tesla's room, ignoring the do not disturb sign that Tesla placed there himself two days earlier. The medical examiner had ruled that the cause of death had been through coronary thrombosis. Two days later, the Federal Bureau of Investigation ordered the alien property custodian to seize Tesla's belongings, even though Tesla was an American citizen. A man named John G. Trump, a professor at MIT and well-known electrical engineer serving as technical aide to the National Defense Research Committee, was called in to analyze Tesla's items, which were being held in custody. After a three-day investigation, Trump's report concluded that there was nothing to worry about in unfriendly hands. Nikola Tesla is one of the greatest scientific minds and inventors that the world has ever known. Even though he is somewhat absent from our history books, he is a man that created the foundation for today's technology and lifestyle.